sharing with everyone today why it's best for the elderly not to live with their children. It makes no one happy. Decades ago, probably in the 50s or 60s, due to a shortage of housing, it was very common for elderly parents to live with their children. The relationships between the elderly and their children were also very harmonious. However, over time, more and more conflicts arose when elderly parents lived with their children, especially between mothers-in-law and daughters-in-law or step-parents. The relationships became increasingly delicate, sometimes leading to quarrels, and in severe cases, physical fights. Some may find it very strange that now, with better living conditions and larger houses, the relationships between elderly parents and their children have led to various unhappy situations because of living together. Actually, parents don't want to meddle in their children's lives. And children prefer to live their own lives as couples. In the following story, not only do the son and daughter-in-law refuse to live with the mother, but they also refuse to take care of the sick mother. This makes us sigh and feel helpless. The Story of Sister Wong Sister Wong, 58 years old this year, was abandoned in her hometown by her son and daughter-in-law after suffering a stroke last year. Despite this, the son and daughter-in-law still asked her husband to come to the city to look after their child. Sister Wong and her husband, brotherly, only have one son. So they feel helpless about their son and daughter-in-law's behavior. However, this is the consequence of Sister Wong and her husband's indulgence. The Lee family has only one male heir per generation. So since their son's birth, he has been pampered excessively treated as precious as gold. As their son grew up under Sister Wong's careful guidance, he married a girl from a neighboring village through an introduction. But after the marriage, the son became a hand-pecked husband, always obeying his wife's words. Whatever the wife says, the son dares not disobey. Nowadays, listening to the wife is seen as a factor for family harmony. The son and daughter-in-law's demands Shortly after the son's marriage, the daughter-in-law complained about the small house, demanding to split the family. In the countryside, the son's house is still a very large two-story house, over 200 square meters. Such a living space is entirely sufficient for Sister Wong, her husband, and their son and daughter-in-law. But the daughter-in-law insisted on using the excuse of the house being messy to make Sister Wong and her husband move out. Although Sister Wong was mentally prepared for this, no one expected the son and daughter-in-law to demand the move so quickly. Helpless, Sister Wong first lived with her mother-in-law, and only moved to the newly built house after it was completed. Just as Sister Wong and her husband settled into the new house, feeling relaxed, the daughter-in-law's troublemaking began. More demands from the daughter-in-law. The son and daughter-in-law soon had a child. And to ensure the child received a better education, the daughter-in-law insisted that Sister Wong buy an apartment in the city. For Sister Wong and her husband, buying a city apartment was a big deal, as it would cost hundreds of thousands of yuan, depleting their life savings. But if they didn't comply, the son and daughter-in-law would argue, even threaten divorce. Helpless, Sister Wong and her husband borrowed money from all around to buy a city apartment for their son. Once the city apartment was bought, the son and his family moved in. But then another unbelievable thing happened. The dilemma of caring for the grandchild. The daughter-in-law who had previously demanded a split because the house was messy, now insisted that Sister Wong move to the city to look after the child. Sister Wong was conflicted, having finally enjoyed peace after splitting the family, but now being asked to move to the city to care for her grandson. Reluctantly, to avoid making things difficult for her son, Sister Wong and her husband packed up and took the bus from their rural home to their son's house in the city. In the first few days in the city, Sister Wong felt at ease. 
spending her time cooking and doing some cleaning. But over time, the daughter-in-law began to criticize Sister Wong, complaining that the cleaning was not done properly. Sister Wong's son, although recognizing his wife's deliberate troublemaking, didn't dare oppose her. So he also began to criticize his parents. Feeling wronged, Sister Wong would confide in her husband in secret, but could do nothing else. Having found such a formidable daughter-in-law for her son, the final straw. One time, Sister Wong discovered that the local specialties she brought from home were given away by the daughter-in-law. When she asked about it, the daughter-in-law got angry and started a fight, even hitting Sister Wong. Hurt, Sister Wong turned to her son for justice. But he, afraid of his wife, only told his mother to endure it. This time, Sister Wong couldn't take it anymore and returned to her rural home. But the matter didn't end there. The daughter-in-law threatened divorce again, forcing Sister Wong to return to the city to care for her grandchild for the sake of her son's marriage. During her years in the city, Sister Wong suffered countless grievances, mostly due to the daughter-in-law. In recent years, after being diagnosed with a stroke, Sister Wong finally returned to her rural home. Living apart from her son brought her mental relief. No longer being tormented. But because of her illness, Sister Wong had to rely on her husband for care. As for her son, he's considered not causing trouble to be a blessing. If the daughter-in-law had treated her parents-in-law as she did her own parents, perhaps things wouldn't have turned out this way. But everything is hypothetical. And maybe this is Sister Wong's fate. That's why I suggest elderly parents not live with their children. The reasons for separation. The first reason is that the elderly are outdated. Think about how you ate when you were young. What you ate? And then think about how you eat now. What you eat now? Notice the difference? Even in something as basic as eating, there's a huge change let alone all aspects of life such as clothing, shelter, and transportation, and communication. Young people can easily adapt to these changes. But for the elderly, it's very difficult. Stubborn mothers-in-law and unreasonable daughters-in-law. An old song says it well. You have a reason, I have a reason, even a just official can't resolve family disputes. This issue, that issue. Mothers-in-law and daughters-in-law are always a big issue. Sister-in-law relationships and mother-in-law relationships. The closest is family living under one roof. Eating at the same table. From this perspective, if children and elderly parents live together, inevitably, there will be scenes of stubborn mothers-in-law and gentle daughters-in-law, or kind mothers-in-law and unreasonable daughters-in-law. Thus, with such family complexities, if children and elderly parents live together, unharmonious things will naturally occur. The story of Grandpa Fong. Grandpa Fong, 75 years old, said, I have four children, three sons, and a daughter. Back then, I thought having many children was a blessing, and I was very respected in the village. Never looked down upon because I had three sons. Everyone gave way to me. And in old age, I would have four children to care for me. So I never worried about old age support. When we were young, we were very good to our children, always giving them the best, working hard every day for their sake, hoping they would take good care of us in the future. Gradually, my three sons reached marriageable age. After they got married, my wife and I spent all our savings and went into debt. To repay the debt, I had to keep working, toiling on construction sites every day without complaint. Because of the debt, I never dared to complain, because there was still debt to repay. When my daughter got married, I didn't give her any money. 
thinking she was married off. So there was no need. Instead, I demanded 500,000 yuan as bride price, and gave it all to my sons. It wasn't favoritism, but I felt I deserved the money, having raised my daughter only to give her away. So taking some money was normal. But because I took so much bride price, my son-in-law treated me poorly, never visiting. Back then, I never thought of relying on my daughter, believing my sons would support me in old age. So I only treated them well. After all, they would support me. Later, my wife fell ill and passed away. And as I aged, my health deteriorated. Unable to work anymore. I retired. Due to overwork in my younger days, I fell ill, needing daily care. My three sons decided to take turns caring for me. At first, I was very happy. But after living a month with each son, I found they were unreliable because my daughters-in-law disliked me. I didn't want to go to their homes anymore, not wanting to be mistreated. Helpless, I went to my daughter's home. But my son-in-law, unhappy about the high bride price, treated me poorly. Although my daughter was very filial, if one side didn't welcome me, I couldn't be happy. So I went back to my rural home. At home, I lived a free life, not expecting my sons or daughter to care for me just relying on my own abilities. This way, although my living conditions are bad, my mind is peaceful. So, elderly parents should not live with their children. 3. Don't always satisfy your children. There are some parents who always like to satisfy their children. Whenever they see something their children want, they will try to get it for them without hesitation. However, this is not beneficial for cultivating filial piety in children. On the contrary, we should not always satisfy our children. We need to let children understand that only by putting in their own efforts can they achieve their desires. We also need to let children know that to get what they want, they must spend time waiting. Not everything can be obtained just by asking for it. Only when children understand this will they know that things do not come easily and they will cherish them more and be more understanding of their parents' hard work. Therefore, we must make children filial. Only by raising a filial child can we ensure that the child will be responsible for us in the future. If we just give them everything, the child will eventually turn into an ungrateful person. That will be the most heartbreaking time for us. Hashtag, 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 treat all children fairly when they are young. When people are young, they should treat their children equally. Remember, when raising children, don't just spoil them. You must teach them to be grateful, to repay kindness, to be filial. This way, your old age will be better. People always say time is merciless. The harshness of time becomes particularly evident when a person gets old. In old age, people no longer have the energy they once had. And it's easy to make mistakes. To do foolish things. One of the troubling issues for the elderly is whether to trust their children and tell them how much savings they have. There are quite a few discussions about this issue online. After a period of debate, two opposite views have roughly formed. One view is that parents should tell the children, while the other view is that they should not. Those who believe parents should tell the children argue that the elderly are forgetful and easily deceived, and having too much money in their hands is not good. Those who oppose this view believe that if children know, they will definitely keep asking for money. In fact, regardless of the answer, there is some truth to both sides. Among the many opinions, 
the response of a 70-year-old woman left a deep impression on me. It sounds harsh, but it's very realistic. Aunt Zhang's story. Aunt Zhang is 70 years old this year, with one son and one daughter. Her daughter, a bit older, is married and lives far away. Her son, a bit younger, has been working in the city since graduating from university. Her husband passed away a few years ago due to illness. After retiring, she lives in her hometown on her pension. Although lonely, she can manage on her own to ensure that her children had good lives. Aunt Zhang took out her decades of savings. She gave over 100,000 yuan as a dowry to her daughter and used it to pay the down payment for a house in the city for her son. She did not particularly favor one child over the other. She didn't keep any savings for herself. A health scare. One day, Aunt Zhang suddenly found that her usually agile legs had become stiff and unresponsive. She went to the hospital for a checkup. The doctor suspected a blood clot and advised further examination at a larger hospital. So, Aunt Zhang called her son in the city to inform him of this matter, hoping he could accompany her to the big hospital for a checkup. Unexpectedly, her son said he was on a business trip, too busy to go, and said he had no money for medical and hospitalization expenses. Aunt Zhang then called her daughter who lived far away. Her daughter also said she couldn't leave because she was looking after her own children and only transferred 1,000 yuan to Aunt Zhang, telling her to go to the hospital on her own. When Aunt Zhang said the money might not be enough, her daughter replied, Ask your son for money. Didn't you give all your money to him? Aunt Zhang hung up the phone, feeling heartbroken. She had given money to her son for a house down payment, and sometimes helped with his mortgage payments. Yet, her son turned into someone who spent everything he earned, never saving money, and never showing gratitude. She had bought a car for her daughter as a dowry, but her daughter was ungrateful, thinking she had given all the money to her son, accusing her of favoritism. Aunt Zhang hadn't kept any savings for herself, giving it all to her children, but they never showed concern for her only their own interests. Money is the best test of any relationship. It can reveal everything. Sometimes, in the face of money, family ties become worthless. Should we give all our savings to our children? Some people think we should, because children are our closest family, and we need them for old age support. Others think we shouldn't give it too early. Because once it's given, we become very passive. Regardless of the choice, both reflect certain realities. In old age, should we give all our savings to our children? In our group chat, Xiao Zhang said we shouldn't. And he shared this story. His neighbor, Mrs. Li, lost her husband early and had a son and a daughter, both working in the city. She lived alone in the countryside. Her children would visit occasionally, but sometimes they wouldn't come for months when they were busy. Last year, Mrs. Lee often felt severe knee pain. The village doctor told her it was a knee injury and severe arthritis, and she needed to go to the hospital for surgery. She called her son, who said he was on a business trip, and told her to ask her daughter. Her daughter took her to the hospital, but also scolded her, saying, You shouldn't have given all your money to my brother. Mrs. Lee had saved a lot of money by running a business when she was younger. She should have lived a comfortable life in her old age. But she had given most of her savings to her son for a house and a car, even giving her retirement savings to her daughter-in-law, hoping to win her favor thinking she would rely on them in her old age. However, her son and daughter-in-law didn't seem grateful. Her son often said, Didn't you earn all that money for me? During her surgery, 
her daughter stayed by her side, while her son and daughter-in-law hardly visited. Using busyness as an excuse, most of the surgery expenses were paid by her daughter. People say hearts can't withstand the test of money, and sometimes family ties can't withstand it either. You give everything to some people, but in the end, you end up in a passive and regrettable situation. Of course, Mrs. Lee's situation might be an exception, but it shows that money always provides a sense of security. When you have enough savings, you face life with more confidence. For elderly people, savings are a kind of support. How does the distribution of savings affect the elderly? 1. Impact on family relationships Having an elderly person at home is like having a treasure. An elderly person brings harmony and happiness to the family, becoming the backbone. But modern young people pursue freedom and individual lifestyles, leading to inevitable differences in opinions with the elderly. When the elderly reach the age of retirement, proper distribution of savings can satisfy everyone. But improper distribution can affect family relationships, even leading to court battles. 2. Impact on the elderly's quality of life Most of the elderly's savings are meant for enjoying their later years. How they distribute their savings directly affects their quality of life. It's not easy for the elderly to be fair in property distribution. They should change traditional views and try to treat everyone equally, which will increase happiness. 3. Impact on the elderly's medical care most elderly people now have retirement medical insurance, so they don't worry about medical expenses, especially with the high reimbursement rates. Many families can afford medical treatment. The distribution of the elderly savings affects who will care for them if they fall ill. In families with multiple children, there's often a consciousness of who gets the savings and who takes care of the parents. Actually, Caring for elderly parents is the shared responsibility of all children. When elderly parents are ill, they need company. The distribution of savings in old age is a difficult issue for the elderly. So, how can smart elderly people distribute their savings comfortably? How should elderly people view their savings? They should distribute it reasonably and justly. 1. Elderly people should adopt new views. Raising children to support old age is an old tradition. With progress, issues of elderly care and savings distribution should be viewed with a modern perspective. Nowadays, daughters can also be a support for their parents. Women's careers and status sometimes surpass men's. Relying on daughters for old age support is natural, especially in families with only one child. Elderly care should be based on the actual situation of the family. 2. How smart elderly people ensure a happy old age. Some elderly people save their money as a retirement fund. This money can also earn interest and can be distributed through a will based on the level of care each child provides. However, if the elderly don't give money when their children need it, it seems heartless. Most smart elderly people give half their savings to their children and keep half for themselves. Parents are a support for their children, but not a financial crutch. Children need to strive for their own success. Elderly people keeping some money for themselves allows them to enjoy life and reduces conflicts with their children. Actually, solving various family issues requires communication and understanding. In families with multiple children, the distribution of savings should be balanced based on actual circumstances. Elderly people have their own wishes on how to distribute their savings, but fairness is the best approach. Thank you for watching today's sharing. Don't forget to subscribe and share the Folken channel. Here, you will never be alone.